Hello, welcome to today's edition of Pegasus Test. On today's edition, we're doing Stage 8 of Desert Brutality 2019, the Casarda Drill. The Casarda Drill is deceptively easy and ridiculously hard at the same time. In this section, you were on the 100-yard bay at SUPS, and you started out at the 100-yard uh, line with nothing more than your rifle and a 62-pound kettlebell. And it was really simple. You just had to get the kettlebell to the 50-yard line. And what you did is you chucked it as far as you could, which depending on the throw, you'll see sometimes you get a good one, and other times it goes about as far as nowhere. And uh, wherever that kettlebell lands, that's your shooting position. Now between you and the 50-yard line are some evenly spaced uh, sticks, and every time you can get past one of those sticks, you gain back 15 seconds of time. So while it behooves you to get this done as quickly as you can, it also also benefits you because you can get time back. Now once you get down to the 50 yard line you have to engage a rifle spinner target at the end of the bay. Technically you've been engaging it all the time just the bottom gong but once you get down to the 50 yard you engage the spinner and you keep hitting it until it goes over. Now that's what's supposed to happen. Now pull up a chair and watch this tragic really pathetic performance here. Um, for those of you who have been watching throughout the series, if you're a latecomer, um, I had bronchitis, an ear infection, and probably just about every other form of creeping crud going on, and I was utterly miserable. Uh, went into stage 7, our first stage, feeling, hey, okay, I'm okay, I'll be good. Finished stage 7 going, huh, I might not be as healed as I think I am. Then came stage 8, the Casarda drill. And, uh, after the first throw, it was like, uh-oh. By the second throw, I was hating life, even though you'll hear on the video I'm hating Carl. It's like, no, I was actually hating life. Um, and then from there on, it was just a miserable experience as it was taking just about every ounce of energy I had. And a matter of fact, one of the things not caught on camera is after we completed shooting and have saved the weapon and everything, people got to help me up off the ground. I mean, this so killed my energy level. It was unbelievable. So, this is pretty horrible to watch, just be fair warned. Take a Less look. Last shooting. Aim for the bottom plate. <laughs> hit! You need to hit the bottom on the way up. I hit you, Carl. Just bring your front plate to the way you're adjusting it so that it's close. I hate you, Carl. I write it down. You can look at it if you want. No, you're right. You're bringing the left edge of the Good roll. Good roll.
Almost there. Come on. Power through it. You got this. Good roll. One good throw, one good throw. You got it, Les. There you go, there you go. You got it, Les. Fresh mag, fresh mag. Yeah, that, that was nothing exciting. Um, man, when you have no energy, you just can't throw the kettleball. And when, you know, even when you can get some good distance on it, which I did a few times, there's just no energy uh, to take advantage of it by sprinting up there and gaining back some time. Um, they gave you actually an extra minute on this, so instead of the three minutes that you had on stage one through seven, this one you had four. And as you can see, it just wasn't enough. Um, I'm sure with another couple shots, uh, the spinner would have gone over. It sure felt like it would have, um, but I'm sure everybody says that. Um, the fact of it is, I was so darn smoked uh, that there was no energy to throw the bell. There was no energy to get up and down, and even just getting the sights properly lined up to get the hits, uh, even that was a challenge. Um, this one's a physical challenge. I remember last year in Desert Patali 2018, they had a uh, Casarda drill section, and even in feeling top condition, it still smoked you pretty good. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, the good thing about this, unlike a lot of other drills that you see at Desert Brutality, you know this one's going to be there. It's named after Carl Casarda, one of the uh, in-range guys and the one designing the stages. So it's pretty safe to say every time they have a Brutality event, this will be in it. And your major sporting go uh, goods store sells kettlebells, so practice is easy to get, and it doesn't require you to go to the range, just requires a little space in the park. Overall, Desert Brutality 2019 can only be described one way. Awesome. It's an incredible shooting event, and I encourage everybody to go if you can find a way to get there. It's a great test of your skills. It tests things you don't get to normally practice with. Um, I look at it as a validation of training. Um, you know, even if you don't shoot competition a lot, you know, it's still good to go. Test, see what you've learned. And the environment there is incredible. It's the only way. The competitors there are all helping each other. Nobody's sitting there trying to outdo the other. Yes, everybody wants to perform their best. Everybody wants to try and do good. But at the same token, everybody's helping everybody else. As you've probably noticed throughout these videos, you always hear people shouting out encouragement. You always have somebody helping someone else. Uh, one instance that comes to mind that is really awesome was on stage two, which was our last stage on the second day. On that day, there was one uh, shooter who was shooting a 45 caliber pistol. He had three magazines. Ask somebody if, hey, as I go through magazines, will you reload them for me? Um, you know, I'm going to need them. And what happened is everybody, without asking, formed an assembly line. One guy was catching the magazine when he dropped it, tossing it to the guy who was loading it. Another guy was holding the box of ammo. And yet another guy was giving back the loaded magazine. I mean, it was great teamwork. I saw another guy who had a pistol. He came from California. He was limited. He had just a few 10-round magazines. One of the other competitors was like, hey, I'm using the same pistols. Here's all my high cap mags so you can have a better chance here. Everybody helped everybody else out. As you see on stage one, 
another competitor sent his magazines up to help me out just to, just to make sure that I got through the stage. That alone makes the trip to Desert Brutality worth it. We hope you enjoyed this series about Desert Brutality 2019. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and tune in for our video review of the gear that was used.